So here's vector v, right? Nice. And here is vector w, starting with the same initial point. If we added them together, which we did before, we'd end up with that long vector like that. But what are we doing instead? We're subtracting what? We're subtracting v. So if we want to flip v, let's take vector v right here. Let's just take this for a second, okay? One thing that's actually pretty cool, let me see if I can actually get it to behave properly. Let's see here. You can take this and you can rotate this. Uh, let's rotate it right 100 degrees and then ro ro oh, not 100 degrees, rotate it right 90 degrees. So what have I done with that vector? What, what vector is that now? That is negative what? That's negative vector v, right? So w plus the opposite of v, what is w plus the opposite of v? You would go v, w and then what would you do? Add this to the end of it. And if this is your starting point, where's your ending point? There's your terminal point. So what do I have now? What vector is this right here? That is w minus v. So what vector is that called? That is x. That is x. That is x. Another way to do that, another way to do that is to draw them with the same, draw them with the same initial point and then go from the end of v to the end of w. The end of v to the end of w. I like thinking about it this way right here. That's how I like thinking about it, bringing it back to addition. So what does it mean to put a negative sign outside the front of a vector? It goes the opposite direction. In three dimensions, instead of going here, it would go like this. Does that kind of make, kind of vaguely make sense? Vaguely? Okay. What is I? Yeah, you would say bracket one, it is one, zero, zero. That is another way. What is J? What's J? Zero, one, zero, and what's K? Yeah, zero, zero, one, exactly. Different ways to write the same thing. Okay. So let's take a look at this for a second here. Decide whether vector v is parallel to each of the following vectors. How do you, I'm looking for an answer that looks like this. So u is going to be two components. What are those two components? You could also say something i plus something j. They are the same thing. What are those two things going to be? Try to figure that out by yourself. What are those two things going to be? What are those two things going to be? Try that. So first of all, what did I say? In order to get a unit vector, you need to divide by the magnitude. Does this have a magnitude of 1? What is the magnitude of that? Root 10. It's root 10. Ah, how do you know that? Well, what is this vector? It goes over 1 and it goes up 3, right? So what's the magnitude? It's the square root of 10, right? So what's that yellow going to be? 1 over what? Root 10. And what's the uh, blue going to be? 3. 3 over root 10. Ah, so, if, so what are you doing? So you know that vector u is 1 over root 10 vector v. By multiplying by a scalar, did we change the direction? No, we just changed the magnitude, right? Let's just verify that. What's that going to be? That means it's 1 over root 10. What was vector v? It was 1 comma 3, right? Is that correct? So what do we have here? 1 over root 10 comma 3 over root 10. What's the magnitude? What's the magnitude of that? Well, you put double bars just for notation. To do the magnitude of this, what do you do to each component? How do you find the magnitude of a vector? You square each component and you square root it, right? So it's going to be 1 over root 10 squared plus what? 3 over root 10 squared. What is that? What is that? One tenth plus? It's one tenth plus nine tenths. It's the square root of one, which is one. You just verified it. But yes, you can either write it, either way is the same. One over root 10 i and three over root 10 j. Now you might write it as, you might try to rationalize the denominator like three root 10 over 10. You don't need to rationalize anymore. Well, in math. <laughs> you might want to rationalize in life, but maybe you don't have to do math. <laughs>